preparation session. Today we're going to be discussing measurements. So we're going to look at more questions relating to measurement. Uh, where we calculate the perimeter of a shape, the area and the volume, and also how to convert from one unit to the other. So without wasting any time, we can start. So <clears throat> with measurements, you need to know the formulas, right? Because there are standard formulas, especially to calculate regular shapes. So for example, how we calculate the perimeter, which means the outside of a shape. Uh, we just add the sides with an exception to a circle where we need to find the circumference or the radius um, uh, of this, or where we need to define the diameter or the radius of a circle in order to use it in the calculation. The other thing when you calculate the perimeter or any other length of a circle, always use the pi function of your calculator. Do not use 3,14 but you use the pi function. There is a pi function on all the calculators. You need to look for it on your specific calculator so that you can identify which function to use. Also, calculating an area, an area of a shape, it is the inside from wall to wall of that shape. It's the, the inside of the, the the shape. However, you need to use the formula. So there is no way that you can just add all the, the values that they have given you. You need to apply the formula. So you need to know the formula to calculate the square, the formula to calculate the circle, the triangle, um, and a rectangle. The other thing you also need to remember as well is calculating the volume. And please always remember to keep your mic muted all the time when you join the session. <clears throat> to calculate the volume, so the volume is what can fit inside the shape or whatever the uh, fit three-dimensional figure of a circle or a rectangle or a square, like for example, a box or a bottle, which is, we call them a cylinder or a cube or a pyramid. Uh, what, can what can we fit into that? Um, that is the volume. So also you need to be able to calculate uh, the volume of any shape and especially with the volume to always remember what the formula should be with the volume is the area times the height because we just elevate that area with a height so always remember that that if you're not multiplying with a height you're not calculating the volume and you also need to remember the units for each and every type of measurement that you are calculating that if it is a perimeter, it is at that same unit level. So if it's meters, it will just be the answer will be in meters. If it's an area, because it's multiplication, therefore it will be in square. So it will be meter squared, millimeter squared, centimeter squared. If it's a volume, because there are three things that you are multiplying together the area times also the um, the height which then means for the volume the answer will be in centimeters cubed meter cubed uh, but also because it's a volume and the volume is always calculated in liters because we calculate the thing that goes inside how much of that can go in it's the volume 
it's always calculated either in liters or milliliters or kiloliters. So you need to be able to also be able to change from cubic to liters and so on. And also, if they give you the uh, the lengths or the 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 size lengths and the width with different measurement units you need to be able to know how to move from one unit to the other unit so those are the things that we need to be aware of today as we go along and do the uh, the measurements so let's look at a couple of questions so that we can refresh our mind in terms of the type of questions that you get in the exam so we um maybe i should share this um uh, again this week with everyone i'm gonna check if i'm able to share in the chat function in the file chat function you will let me know if you are able to see the papers right especially for those who just joined so they so that everyone can have the same documents that we are going to use uh, let me just see if i can add During the course of the session, you can download them and you can also use them for preparation on your own as well. OK, so let's look at possible questions. And sometimes some of the questions are not as clear as possible the way we would like them to be. but. Let's see if we can make sense of what we are looking at. And because it's not clear which area is shaded, because here they're asking, I'm going to abandon this question because the first question that we have now is not clear. Consider the figure below the semicircle with the center M and the diameter of 18 centimeter perfectly into the rectangle as indicated in the sketch. We can see the sketch and calculate the perimeter of the shaded figure. So which one is the shaded figure? Is it just the this area that is shaded? I can make sense of that but let's assume that the shaded area is this part of a rectangle which is cut off by a triangle that is eating up out of the area and I'm going to assume that the semicircle is also um, not shaded I'm not sure if the semicircle is shaded it's very difficult going to be challenging.
Yeah, it's going to be very challenging because I don't know whether the semicircle is also. Uh, shaded. Um, OK, let's assume that the, sh the shaded area is the whole semicircle plus the triangle. Let's we're going to assume that um, if we need to calculate the. The perimeter of the shaded area, which is the semicircle plus this rectangle shape, which is cut off out by the rectangle, we, uh, by the triangle, or we then can consider this as a what we call a composite shape. So then it has the half a circle and it has a rectangle shape. So what we can do because what we know is the perimeter means adding up all the sides. And because for the side of a um, the side of a cycle, we use the formula and to calculate the perimeter of a cycle, we need to know what the formula is. So the circumference of a cycle is calculated by 2 pi, 2 pi r. But now because this is a half a circle, therefore it means we need to divide that circle by half. And we need to know what our radius is. We were told what the diameter is. And our diameter is 2, two up. So therefore, diameter is made up of two radiuses. So it means in order for us to find the radius, we're going to say the, di the radius, we divide the diameter by 2. So our diameter is 18 divided by 2 will give us half of that, and which our radius is 9. So then we can come to our half a circle calculation, which will be to, um, pi r, therefore we just need to calculate pi times 9, and that will give us, remember to use your pi function from your calculator. And let me know if you don't know what your pi function looks like, or way to find it. So if you're using a Casio, you will press second function, and you will press the button that relates to the pi next it's the times 10 to the power raised to the power of x button next to the answer and multiply that with 9 and that gives us 28 28.27 so we know what this circumference is. Now we need to add this side and that side and this side and this side and this side they didn't give us because this side since they didn't give it to us we can assume that is the same as that side. Um, it's 12 centimeters so this is 12 centimeter. So we're going to add the circumference of this whole figure, which is the shaded part, will be 28.27. You can start adding up plus 12 plus 7.5 plus 14.8 plus 12. And it will, the units will be in centimeters because all of them are centimeters. So what do you get? It might be correct. It might not be correct because I'm making assumptions on a picture that is not clear. So let's see if we are right. 
plus 12 plus 7.5 plus 14.8 plus 12 equal 74.57, which is option number two. That is how you will find the circumference of a shaded area. Any questions? And remember, circumference is adding all the sides and since we are adding the sides, you can ignore the triangle that is eating up uh, the rectangle within the hollow that creates the hollow of a rectangle. Sorry, ma'am. Hello. Yes. It's Michelle, ma'am. Yes, Michelle. Um, Lizzie, can you please explain again how to calculate the circumference on the calculator because I didn't get that. Um, we explained about using the, like the steps on using the the pi symbol. So I know how to get it, like the shift, and then obviously where to get the pi symbol. But like you explained, like how to use your calculator to calculate the pi using the pi function. Okay. On your calculators. So depending on which calculator you have, I'm going to show you on the Casio, and then I'll show you on the sharp calculator, especially for those who have a financial calculator. So <clears throat> um, to calculate the pi r, because it's just pi multiplied by the value of r, which is 9. As I wrote it this way, I can put it the same way on the calculator. But instead of using bracket, I will have to use multiply. Uh, I'm going to stay away from using bracket. So shift pi, they use my pi, and I'm going to say multiply by 9, or not 99, 9, which is equals to, as you can see, straightforward. You just need to use the multiplication. I'm not sure if I use the bracket, it will work. So let's see. Shift pi open bracket 9, close bracket, equal, and it should work because it's brackets are multiplication. On your Casio calculate or sharp calculators, you can also do the same. Just need to put back my calculator to normal mode. <clears throat> so on your uh, financial calculator, go and find your pi function. It should be somewhere on the, on your, I think on the dot, those who have a financial calculator. Uh, on, on my calculator, it is a pi function. It's written already on, on the button. So I just press that pi function and then I press the, The bracket and put nine and close bracket and that's that's it that's how you will find the pi you use that pi function always thank you lizzie thank you Okay, so let's go to the next question. Just want to see if they have more questions. Yes, they do. <coughs> Refer to the sketch in 16. That is the sketch that we just used. And now they want us to calculate the area of a shaded uh, region. Now, with the area, it's going to work differently. So now we know that for for a um, perimeter, we were adding the sides. Now we are not adding the sides anymore, but 
we have, I just wanna, um, I just wanna redraw this. Uh, just give me a second so that I can write all these values. Okay. So let's go down here. I'm gonna redraw it here so that it's a bit clean. It might not be 100% the way you saw it there, but I will try. They had this thing there. They had that. And you have, and this is six centimeter. Come on. I'm just going to write the six. You will understand what is that. Um, this was 14.8. This is 12. This is 12 and this is 7.5. And what do we have here? Was the, the midpoint somewhere there in the circle at the top? And this was. A deal. Okay, so right. Now we know that the shaded area is this part, right? This is our shaded area. So because it's the area, we need to treat this as two composite uh, shape. So we're going to first talk about three things here. So not there's not only uh, two shapes. There are three shapes, but they are made up of four things that we need to take into consideration when we we do all this. So now <clears throat> there is the cycle, a half a cycle. There is a rectangle. I'm going to treat the whole thing as a rectangle. And there is a triangle with a right angle with a height. So we can assume that this is the base and this is the height. So we have a triangle. So we need to calculate the area of each and every one of them. And we need to add the area. So we'll have to add the area of a circle and a rectangle, but we also need to subtract the area of a triangle because it's eating up some portion of the rectangle. So we can subtract the area of a triangle from the rectangle and add them together. So since I've already laid it out there, let's do the calculation. What is the formula? So you, the other thing you need to always remember is what are the formulas to calculate each one of them? So to calculate the area of a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared, but because we're dealing with a half, we need to take a half of it, right? So this will be pi r squared divided by two. Plus into brackets, we also need the area of a, this is the area of a circle. The area of a rectangle is length times breadth. So you also need to remember length times breadth. So I can also use this as my breadth, but that's the thing. So I'm going to have to do length times breadth of the rectangle. But I need to also subtract the area of a triangle, which is half base times height. Our base for this triangle is 18 because it's the same length as the diameter. So we need to take that into consideration and our height of this triangle they gave us because they gave us a 90 degree angle somewhere there. Uh, there is a 90 degree angle, which is not clearly visible a lot, but it is there, which tells you the height. So which makes things easier. 
So we know what the height of this is. Six. So we need to use half base times height. Okay. Now we can substitute the values and start calculating. You can also do this separate one by one by calculating the area of a circle, calculate the area of a rectangle, and then come in and calculate the substitute into the formula. So our area of a cycle, of a half a cycle, we know that our radius, we did calculate it previously, is 9. So you will say pi times 9 squared divided by 2 plus open bracket, open bracket. Our length, doesn't matter which value I use, times 18 minus half times breadth will be 18 times height will be 6. And that's how you will do that. Let's calculate. So what is pi to the power of, I'm oh, sorry, pi times 9 to the power of 2 divided by, by 2? Will be 9 times 9 is 18, 18 times pi divided by 2. So let's do the calculation. You tell me the values. Since you are able to calculate the pi as well. What is the answer? For pi times 9 to the power of 2 divided by 2. Are you guys still here? Are you guys calculating? Or are you waiting for me to give you the answer? Nobody. Well, I don't know if it's right, but mine is, I get 127.23. 127.23. And remember, we, while we're still in the problem mode, we need to write all the values. So write all okay, the decimals. So two, three, two, three, four, five. And then oh, there's a right. zero, and then zero two five. Zero two five. Oh, I thought we are using a financial calculator. Okay, so now let's go into the bracket. Twelve times eighteen. Two one six. Two one six minus half which is 0 0.5 times 18 times 6. 54. Is 54. What my rule says, work what is inside the bracket. Well, you can use your calculator to, to do everything. So inside the bracket, it's 162. Sorry, ma'am, I'm writing also. And what is the answer? Oops. 127.23450. It's two is equals two eight nine point two. So it's number it's option three. Two eight nine point two centimeter squared, which is option three. And that's how you will calculate. Area of a shaded. 
Let's look at more questions, unless if you have any question. Okay. Let's look at question 18. Question 18 says there is a square fish pond. Oh, a square fish pond has a solid fixed circular pillar or an island at the center. So as displayed on this figure. The measurement of the pond are indicated on the diagram. So the point, the pond is a rectangular figure because the sides are not equal. If it was a, a cube or a, a, a square, it would have been, uh, oh no, sorry, it is a square, the height. So because they told us that it's a square, so therefore it means all the sides are four, 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 and the heights will be two, 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 two. Okay, so they did tell us that. And they also told us that there is a circular thing which makes it easy. And they say um, the circular island has a diameter of one meter. So it means from this end of the circular to that end, it is one meter. So we can calculate the radius because the radius will be half of that diameter. The question is, determine the volume of water that would fill the pond to its brim and give the answer to your nearest liters. Now, because <clears throat> you need to calculate the volume of the brim, inside the brim there is a circular uh, thing inside. A, there is a solid uh, pillar. There is a, 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 a pillar inside of this uh, box. We need to also take that into consideration when we calculate uh, the volume because the the volume of a square where that circular is needs to be subtracted because it will not be included in the amount of water that will be filled in because it's just an island, right? So <clears throat> the same, we take this as a composite problem because there are two figures that we need to take into consideration. Since we're talking about volume, so you need to remember this is a cube. What is the volume, the formula to calculate the volume of a cube? Length times breadth, which is the area, times you need to always use the height. Because it's a uh, it's a cube, or we could have just said it's l cubed or something like that. But because it's not l cubed, because they gave us the height of this is meters and this side and this side times that side. That's what we need to be calculating when we calculate the, using the volume as well. So our length is four times four times our height of two. We have calculated the volume we calculate the volume of the the fish pot, which is how much? 32. 32, and I must put the meter cube. You must always remember that because it you must put the, the unit as well. So now let's calculate the volume of this circular thing the volume that we need to subtract from the volume of this circular of the pond 
So because this is a circle, it will be pi r squared times height because it's a circle plus the height. And the height of this is similar to the height of the, the box. So what is our radius? So we can calculate r is diameter over two, and we know that one over two is our diameter because our diameter, sorry, one is our diameter. So this will be pi times half squared times the height of two. Calculate. What do you get? I get 1.5779079. Yes, yes, I get the same. Two seven. Centim oh meter cubed meter cubed <clears throat> yeah. and now we need to take 32 minus we need to subtract those two together to get the volume, the actual volume of this fish pond, of the water that will go into the fish pond to the brain. So, 82 minus, so you need to subtract and the answer is 30. Point four two nine two zero three six seven three six seven. We're not done because this is in meter cubed. So you need to make sure that you know how to convert from meter cube to liters. So how many liters are in meter cube? How many meter cubes are in liters? Two big meters, two, me two liters. So there is one, one cubic meter in 1,000 liter. So it means we need to multiply by a thousand. So one, oh, not cubic meter or oh, one cubic meters. It's one thousand meters. Am I right? What is cubic meters? How do we write cubic meters? Is it meter cubed? Yes, ma'am. Oh, looking in our um in our study guide now, ma'am, it says here, obviously they have like um centimeters now here, mm -hmm. but they saying um that one liter 
for example, one liter is equal to 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters. It gives you 100 cubic um, centimeters, 1,000 cubic centimeters. That's for the centimeters. I don't see one for cubic meters. Oh, yeah, ma'am, the same. It's you are right, ma'am. It's right. So it's the first one because yeah. it says here in our textbook, one cubic meter is equal to one thousand liters. Yes, that I know. So if we know that, right? If we know that one meter cube or cubic meter is equal to one thousand liters, therefore it means. 30 cubic meters will be equals to 30 times 1,000. Yes. So you just multiply this by 1,000, and the answer will be? Option 1. Option 1. It will be 30,429 liters. If we get it to the nearest liters, because it will be point two zero, yeah, so thirty thousand four hundred and twenty nine. Okay, so that's measurements. Let's see if we have more questions on this paper. Should be it. It. So let's move to the next question paper. Measurements. Here is our winner. Consider the diagram below. The measurements are indicated on the diagram. And this looks like a triangle with a triangle within. Calculate the shaded area in the diagram. What? Oh, so you need to calculate the area of a shaded area in the diagram because the answer I in meter, millimeter squared. Okay, so which is a little bit. It makes it a little bit tricky, right? Um, because this triangle is a triangle within another triangle. Any ideas? Let's think through this. Ma'am, mm -hmm. when, when I look at this, right, the first thing I think is that we should convert the, the centimeters, either, yeah, the centimeters to millimeters, because all the other, um, the other measurements are in millimeters. Mm -hmm. So that is the first thing that I would think. So let's convert millimeters or centimeters to millimeters. So we can start there. Yes, let's start there. How many? Centimeters are in a millimeter. So there is one centimeter, one centimeter. in 10 meters, right? Okay. So if we know that one centimeter makes up 10 millimeters. Divided times by 10. Then you multiply by 10. So, 4, 1, 2. Can, can I just say something? 
centimeter will be the same as yes um you're working out uh, centimeters but i think it's actually a mistake i think the 41 should be millimeters no it's not a mistake you need to convert like yes, if I you said, look at the other line at the top it's 40 millimeters this yep. one is it, not it, centimeters it yes it doesn't matter the line outside what it's whether it's in in millimeters or centimeters what they want you to do is convert it's not a mistake they want you to convert they want you to use the conversion so it'll be 412 millimeters yes And the 4.4 will be 44. millimeters. So, but that does not solve your problem because we need to calculate the area yeah. of that shaded area. Which, um, if I think of it this way, this is a right angle. So I can take any of the sides, maybe the 40 millimeter as my height, and this is the base. Then if that is the base and this is my height, 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30 millimeter. That's my base and my height. Or 40 is my height. It doesn't really matter which one is your base or which one is your height, because at the end it will be half times 40 times 30. But that gives you the area of the entire rectangle or triangle. And because the shaded area, they didn't give us that which one is your height, which one is the base, there is no right angle there. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh -huh. Morning. Tell Morning. Me, um, the formula that we're using for this, is it off base times height? Uh, because the, the area of a triangle, it's half base times height. If you have a right angled triangle, right? Okay. Now, the shaded part is not a right angle triangle. Unless if we go into assume that if the bigger triangle is a right angle triangle, then the inner triangle will automatically become right angle triangle. Then we can apply half base times height. Right? if we use that same assumption mm -hmm. and if we say it's a right angle triangle there therefore then it means this is our base this is our height if we put the right angle triangle the side this will be our base this will be our height that's how i'm going to assume this whole thing so what is going to be our formula we're going to use here? That's the thing I want us to think through. Because in your module, they never gave you any other yes, type of your formula. They only have provided you with, with that. So this is more Correct. about maths. 
thinking outside of your basic numeracy <laughs> scope. <laughs> okay. Mm. Because if I don't have uh, the height, there are, there are other formulas that we can use because if our, like let's assume that our triangle, it's a scaling triangle, then we can use the square root of your side times your side minus your, uh, because if I have three sides of a triangle, right? A, B, C, it will be A, you will calculate the perimeter of that and the perimeter will always be the area of all the sites that you have, right? So you will say A plus B plus C. But now, because we will be calculating Lizzie, mm -hmm. I have a question. The 41.2, don't you think it should have been millimeters or daddy? It looks like it's millimeters there on top. And I think the, th the first lady also asked the question because when you do that, it comes to the answer number two. What number two? Yes, option two. Yes, what? it's option not. Two. Yes, I think it shouldn't be centimeters. No, 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 there. wait, 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 wait. What? Answer number two. What are you calculating to get to answer number two? If you take the half base times height, like say which, for example, no, if you wait, say which half times base times height? Like say for example, you only calculate the shaded area, right? And you say half um ten, right? Times by the height and you take forty one point two, then you get two oh six. No. Uh uh. Okay. You can't because this is not a right angle triangle. So, alternatively, in order for us to calculate this shape, because this triangle is almost, it's not a right angle triangle in a way. So, because they didn't tell us that, if they would have given us a right angle, yeah, we can use that. So now, I'm gonna give you another option to do. Let's calculate the um, circumference or the, yes, the perimeter of this, which is, uh, we need to convert this because it's centimeters, it's not millimeters, regardless of whether you think that it is millimeters or centimeters at this point, but they gave you the unit there as centimeters. Unless if this is millimeter in, in disguise, but you can see that there is a centimeter. So 412 plus 4.44 uh, plus 10. And we're going to find that it is how much? 466. 5? 466. 466, yes, okay, cool. Just wanna do this because I think this might be where we calculate this. 466, right? We need to take half of this so that we calculate a semi because it's not a, so divide this by two, and that gives you 
466 divided by 2 will give you 233. 233. Uh, we're still working with millimeters. No. The next step is to calculate the area of this triangle, which is not. We use the formula, your semi perimeter of this, and you're going to say your times your semi perimeter minus one of the sides. So we're going to start first with the. We can start with the. Yeah, it's going to be a negative. Oh, but anyway, let's see. Uh, minus. Let's not use that one. Let's use 44. Thanks. And what do we get? The square root of your 2.33. And I'll take the square root first, 2.33. And not 2.33, it's 2, 2.33 times two thirty three minus forty four plus bracket times two thirty three minus ten and Square root of that. Nope. Mm -mm. It's not. Oh, sorry, I forgot the other one. It's... But it's not gonna work. No, no, no. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So sorry, Liz, I have a question. Mm. The other thing that I would think is that um, obviously I can be wrong, <laughs> but I would think that um, like you in the beginning when you started, like don't we calculate the entire triangle, right? And yeah. then calculate the shaded area and then subtract the shaded area from the, the entire triangle. Yes. Yes, but the challenge is with your and your with the shaded area triangle. We need to find a formula to use to calculate that shaded area because it is not a right angle triangle. Do you understand? We know that this, the big triangle, it's a right angle triangle. So that one, it's easy because if it's a right angle triangle, then one line, the, the other line of the way it makes a right angle, we will take it as the height whether it's the 40 or the 30 will be, one of them will be the height, which makes it easy to calculate because then it will be your height, your half times the height times the breadth, which will give you 600, right? For the entire shaded area. Oh, sorry, the big triangle. The big T will give you half 
times 40 times 30, which is equals to 600. The inner one where not given to us as a right angle triangle, we can Unless if we say, if we take it from here, to there, if we only include this, we can find a right angle triangle. <gasps> okay, now. Based on how I just highlighted it right now, right? So if we take it, not including this part of the triangle, but only this small portion, right? Will give us, because then we will need it to subtract those two other triangles, because we can calculate them separately, because they divided it in this way to help us know what is this length and what is this length and what is this length so which makes it easy so instead of calculating the entire big triangle let's calculate this half of it so we're going to use half 40 times 20. what do we get Four hundred. We get four hundred. Now we can also subtract this part because if we subtract this part, then it means we are left with only that shaded part, right? So let's subtract that part. Well, that part is half forty times ten, which is how much? Two hundred, which is two hundred. Two hundred subtract two hundred, or four hundred subtract two hundred is two hundred. Two hundred meter squared, which is option one. Which is option one, and we oh, can <laughs> yes. <gasps> because it's a composite triangle made up of small little triangle within, but all those other small triangles are not right angle triangle, but they also gave us which one is the right angle triangle. So, this sorry, is it, yes. so even if we did it the other way, right? If we said like, um, if, even if we said like the 40 times 30, like for example, like you have it on the screen, right? Even if we did it like that, we'd still get to 200, right? Which way? Or, or, or rather, my question would rather be like, when we see something like, like this in exam, but say it's like a different, yeah. a different shape, for example, right? Mm -hmm. How'd, how would we like like you like you the 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 light went on now for you right? Mm. You gone how to calculate? How would we know how to identify that we should do it this way? Hence, you have to uh, try different permutations to get it right, right? You can't just rely on the first instant. Because the other thing, if we use the big triangle, it means we needed to subtract this side and that side. But we cannot subtract this side because 
it's not a right angle triangle. This one, we are not told if they could have yes. put here a right angle triangle, then it would have made it easier for us to identify that this is our uh, height or breadth, and this is our height. But they didn't give us that, so we cannot use that information. So based on the information that we know, we can do other things. So because they also split this to tell us this from this distance to that distance, from this distance to that distance, and from year to year, if they could have given us the whole entire line and said this is 30 centimeter, we couldn't, we can't get the, this area by not knowing how much that area is and that area is. So we need to also think about all those other things that they give you to help okay. you. Okay, so, so, so Lizzie, in an instance like this, you'd say that the key thing is to look, first of all, if there's a right angle triangle, which, yes. help, which, which would obviously help us to see where to, what areas to calculate in order to get to our answer. Yes, for a triangle, it's always useful to have a right angle triangle to calculate the area, especially for the triangle, because you need the height. If you don't know the height, the right angle creates you that height, gives you the opportunity to have that height. Whereas if it, does, if it doesn't have the height, they need to tell you what the height is of that triangle. You cannot assume that this line is your height. Um, uh, yeah, so they will give it, they will either give you the height of the triangle or they will give it to you in a right angle. And you will know that one of the sides of the right angle creates the height of your triangle. Oh, sorry, we're still on the same question paper. So let's look at more complex questions. And here is another question. So at least this one is clearer. It's shaded. So consider the diagram below. The measurements are indicated on the diagram. The semicircle fits perfectly on the shorter side of this uh, figure. So now, uh, as you can see here, they also did a, because then it means this side as well, it's a right angle because on a tangent of a right angle, where it creates a right angle, it creates a 90 degree angle on that tangent. And hence, even if the square is on this side, we must also know that this side is also a square because at the, the angle at this point is 180 because it's 90 plus 90, it creates a and these are just simple math um, things. That's why I'm saying some of these questions, they give it to you um, thinking that you know about math, but this should be a basic numeracy question. Okay, so this is also, we can consider this a composite figure because there are different figures within the figure. There is a, this figure, if I draw a line here that join, this side to the side, we can say almost mostly this is like a rectangle, possibly, but not, not really, but we can draw that. Um, and hence you have this dotted line that moves from this uh, point to that half of or cutting through the length of the other opposite side, right? Um, so this line, the dotted line is to help you know what this red uh, diameter is. So the diameter of this circle, it's four centimeters, four centimeter based on that line. It's not based on this skewed line that creates this triangle here. It's based on the dotted line. So you need to also think of that. Okay, so you are given a semicircle that eats up part of this shape. And you are given a re almost similar rectangle shape, but not to that, which has um, the sides uh, added. 
because then they tell you that from this side to this side, the six centimeters is the same from that side to that side. The only difference is the side is extended by two centimeter, hence this line creates a additional point eight centimeter from the normal four centimeter line of the square or the rectangle that they have here. So they want you to calculate the perimeter of this shaded area. So it means you need to calculate adding this side, this side, this side, and that side. Remembering that this is a half a circle. So a half a circle circumference is 2 pi r divided by 2 because 2 pi r is a circumference of a circle. Divide that by 2 because you need to have that circle. It's not a full circle. It's half a circle. So you will do the same as what we did previously. So the perimeter, which is the circumference, will be 2. Uh, I can just say it's pi r because 2 and 2 will cancel out and you will be left with pi r plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4.8 and that should give you the answer that you are looking for. So you need to first calculate the radius because you are given the diameter of 4 centimeter. The radius is 2, so just go and substitute into this formula. 2 times pi plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4.8. Easy, right? That is the answer. Option one, ma'am. The answer is... 25.08. So if you add 2 times pi times, oh, plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4.8 will give you that much. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Consider the diagram with the measurement indicated on it below. The rectangle with a diagonal of five centimeter. So because of that diagonal of five centimeter, you need to also look at it because it touches from this side of the circle to the other side. And what do we call that? Diameter. It's a diameter. So it means they gave you a diameter. And this... Uh, figure that we have, what can we call this? It is a composite figure. How many figures do we have here? Two, right? You have a circle and within a circle, there is a white area, which is cut off by the, it's a rectangle because the side of this rectangle, it's four centimeter. If you don't see, this is four, I hope it's four centimeter and this is three centimeter. So that side is three and this side is four centimeter. So <clears throat> your question is calculate the area of the shaded part. What do we need to do here? Do you know? Um. <laughs> It, don't we have to do the same like calculate the the circle and then the um, rectangle and minus them from each other that's correct you need to subtract the area of a rectangle from the circle the area of a circle the area of a rec of a circle remember it's a full circle it's pi r squared minus the area of a rectangle, it's length times breadth, right? Substitute the values, calculate. Let's see if 
you can do this without my help, at least. Ma'am, I get um, option two, 7.64. Option two. Message. Option one. I don't know you've gone so far with. Okay. So what is our radius? 2.5. 5 times 2.5 squared minus our length times breadth. 4 times 3. 4 times 3. And what is the answer that you got? 7.6349. Seven point six three four nine six three four nine. Yes, and if we round it off, it's seven point six four. Huh? Is it six three nine four or six three four nine? Four nine. Four nine. Then it cannot be if you round it off to be. 7.64. It can, ma'am, because the 9 makes the 4 or 5, and the 5 makes ah, the 3. Makes it this, oh, yeah. Ma'am, we do basic someone. numeracy. <laughs> hey, gosh, yes. Then the 5 becomes 5, and it's bigger than then it's 4. Hey, yes, oh, you guys are teaching me now things that I taught you. Oh, gosh, some of these things. That's good, mm. ma'am. It shows that we're learning. Hi, yeah. It does, it does. So at least it's good that I know that you guys are, are getting it and that you understanding. Oh, it makes my heart sink. And it makes me want to dance. Okay, so here is another question. So looking at this. I hope I'll be able to see what these values are. They don't look visible, clearly visible. Let's see if they have mentioned them on the thingy. Refer to the sketch below. This is a side cylindrical steel rod, which is 30 millimeter long. Okay, so that is the rod that is inside. Has a radius. Oh, this is the rod, the whole of it. Has a radius of six centimeter. So I'm trying to see. Oh, this is the six centimeter. So this is the radius. So they gave you the radius of six centimeters. So this is six centimeter. Uh, and has a square hole right through it. So there is a hole right through from this side to the other side. The hole is in the center of this rod, so it's in the middle. The sides of the square are five 
millimeters. So this is five millimeters or so this side and that side and this side and this side. Individually, there are five millimeters. Oh, this is millimeter, not centimeter. Let's think of all this. So the only visible number here actually was 30 millimeter. So it was it makes it easy because this is the height. Can just point it out to that way. So the question is calculate the volume of the metal used for this rod with the square in a hole. So we need to calculate the volume and we need to take away the volume of the square thing in the middle. So what is the volume of a cylinder? A cylinder is made up of a circle and the height, right? So think about the area of a circle and times that with the height. So the area of a circle is pi r squared times the height. Now we need to think about the cube that is inside, which is the rod. You can see that it goes right through, so it's got the height as well. So we need to subtract the volume of this cube thing as well. So what is the volume of a of a cube? Also remember it's the surface of a square, which means we um we normally use um, L squared for the area of a of a square, right? But you can always you can it, it's up to you what you want to do. L squared times height because we have the height of that. So you need to subtract that from the volume of the rod. So what is our radius? It was easy. I times our radius is six centimeter. They told us you don't have to cut, divide that by two. It's not the diameter, it's the radius. So six squared times 30 minus five squared times 30. Or we could have just said length times breadth times height, which is five times five times 30, which is the same thing as five squared because there are two fives. Let me not confuse you. Calculate and get the answer. And remember now the answer will be in millimeters. And on this question, they are they've got millimeters cubed and centimeter cubed. And they didn't tell you how the answer should look. It means if it's yeah. not millimeter cube, then it means we need to Same do some thing. conversions. Yeah. Okay, so have you calculated? Yes, ma'am. The answer is option three. Let's first find get the answer and then think about how do we convert from that one to the answer that we want. So okay. What is the answer? Um, it's two two thousand six hundred and forty two. Two thousand six hundred and forty two point nine two point nine two zero zero. Oh, I'm just gonna keep it. That's fine. Yes. Millimeter <laughs> two millimeter cubed, and if you look at this. It's not one, it's not two. So it means we need to do some conversion. So how many millimeter cube are in centimeter cube? 1,000. So if there are 1,000, therefore it means we're going to have to divide by a thousand because we're moving from a smaller value to a bigger value. So we divide, previously we used to multiply, now we are dividing by 
a 1000. So 2642 divided by 1000 will give us 2.64 centimeter cube. Well, when when we were growing up and studying or learning maths in the olden days, when we were using match sticks and all that, the other way that we were taught <clears throat> how to divide, especially when it's thousand hundreds. So if I have two thousand six hundred and forty two. 0.92 and I'm dividing by a thousand and they say thousand are three zero so it means I must move three spaces one two three spaces so it will be 2.642 and hence I still remember that and this I'm talking about long time ago in the 19 80 something. Not to give my age anyway, but yeah, it was that long ago. Nowadays we have calculators. Previously we used to use match sticks and bottle caps and all those things. All right, enough with history lesson. Let's move on to the next question. Are there any questions? No questions. <clears throat> we have 30 minutes, so let's hope for this last question paper will have nice questions and we get a most. Are the most difficult question because it's got so many lines within it. Consider the sketch below a rectangular piece of a material with the size of 150 centimeter and 100 centimeter is used to make a circular tablecloth. The diameter of the completed cloth of must be 0 0.9 meter and five centimeter. Okay, so there are two diameters and I'm working with two different um, units. So you have meters and you have centimeters. It's provided for the hem, which is how much the material is wasted in terms of this. So we need to calculate wastage. Mm. Okay, so how do we go about on this? We know that we have this rectangular material that is given. <clears throat> so it is 150 and 100 centimeters, so the length times the breadth of this rectangle. And we are told that we, uh, the hem of this cloth has a diameter, so it needs to be, the cloth needs to be cut into a circular, so into this rectangular cloth needs to be cut into a circular cloth to create a tablecloth with the radius for the hem to be 0 0.9 meters and 5 centimeters. Mm. So let's convert meters the to centimeters. Hem. Yep. The diameter, yes. Let's convert the meters to centimeters. So how many? What is 0 0.9 meters? So 
It's 90 centimeters. It will be 90 centimeters. So now we're working with the same unit, 90 centimeters. So <clears throat> the diameter, so I'm going to assume that the diameter from here to the outer side cycle that those two, this is 90 centimeter and the diameter for this one inside to that side is five centimeter. Like we need to calculate the wastage. How much will be? How much of the material will be wasted? So let's calculate first the area of a rectangle, which is length times breadth, which is 150 times 100. And let's calculate the area of a circle. Now I'm tempted to use only one of them not two of them because the cycle that will be completed because it's a circular thing so the whole cycle diameter will be 90 centimeter but they need to create the hem uh, which is the folding so it will just be of five centimeters it's a little bit of it it's not it's not wasted Th then it means that five centimeters is also included in the 90 if we calculate for the bigger cycle the outside the outer one or is it something that they cut off i'm not sure let's see let's calculate the area of a cycle for the bigger cycle so which is pi r squared right so if we use the bigger um diameter then which is the outer one then it will be pi times what is our radius 90 divided by 2 which is 45 45 squared so let's what is 150 times 100 15,000. 15,000. And on the other side? 6,361. 6,361. Point seven two five. One, one, two, four. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so. Um, and this is in centimeters, right? So let's subtract that from that so that we can get the area of what are we calculating? Wait, let's make sense of this before I make I, I make you subtract things from one another. So, <clears throat> oh, we calculated the area of a wastage. Sorry, my bad. Oh, gosh, wastage. It will be 15,000 minus the hem, the, the tablecloth. What is remaining? What is it that is remaining? 8,638.275. And this is in centimeters. Wait, right? Let's go to our answer is in meter cubed. So we need to convert centimeter squared to meter cubed. 
how many? Sorry, centimeter squared to uh, meter squared. How many centimeters squared are in meters? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yes, man. Okay, so ten thousand. It means there are four zeros. So if I move four zeros, one, two, three, four, it will be zero comma six eight three four. Yes, ma'am. So the answer will be option one. So you just need to divide by ten thousand. Get to meet at squared. So it takes eight is eight thousand six hundred and thirty eight divided by ten thousand will give you zero comma six eight zero comma eight six four. Okay. Now, here is another question. There is our right angle given. Make it easy, right? Because we need to know whether the triangle is right angled or not. If they didn't give us the right angle, but they would have given you this line, then you would assume that that is your height. It gives you the height of this triangle. But now it's a right angle triangle. So, and we are told what the height is, is 30 centimeters. So let's read. A semicircle is drawn inside a triangle as indicated on the sketch. The side length of the triangle are 30, 40, and 50 centimeters, respectively. Calculate the perimeter of the shaded part. Composite as well. You have the bigger part is the triangle. But remember as well, you are calculating, what are we calculating? The perimeter of this. Because the perimeter is adding up all the sides. Right, but now what they didn't give you is this portion and that portion, which makes it difficult to calculate if we just adding all the sides. So in order for us not to worry too much, we can calculate the circumference of a circle. Or let's first calculate the circumference of a triangle which is the whole thing we calculate it regardless of whether there is a missing piece we're going to subtract the circumference of a semicircle we call it a half a circle so let's do that so we know that these circumference of a um of a triangle is just adding all the sides. So you just add all the sides. 50 plus 30 plus 40 minus uh, pi, pi r because it's half a circle. We know that circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. You always need to remember that, right? So because it's half, Two and two will cancel, you are left with pi r. Now, what you do not know is you still have a problem, right? We still have a problem, a huge problem, actually. Because, one, we are not being told what is the distance between this and that unless if you guys have some uh, what do you call those 
you are able to read uh, the numbers here. Ma'am, there yes. is numbers. I think you just have to zoom in maybe. I, th oh. I think like there is a number there at the bottom. Yes, it's five. I think it's five. Is it five it's centimeters? It's five centimeters, yes, ma'am. And this side? Five as well. Is it five? Yes, ma'am. So if we know those, then we didn't even have to do this because we could have 50 plus 40 plus 5 plus 5 plus half a circle. We can do that. But anyway, we can do that as another, as another um, activity. You can check, double check. So if we know that this is 5 and this is 5, therefore this is 10, right? Therefore, the remainder yeah, will be 5 plus 5 is 10, then it means this is 20. So if our diameter is 20, then 20 divided by 2 is 10. So we're going to have minus pi times 10. 50 plus 30 is 80 plus... 40 120. it's 120 minus 120 minus 8 times 10 which is equals to 80 and it's none of those. And they set the perimeter of this. Which is 88. 88.58 centimeters. Huh. And it's none of them. Probably maybe this answers they calculated them wrong. But let's double check something. So we can also calculate it by saying 50 plus 40 plus 5 plus 5 plus pi r, right? Which is 90, 100, 100 plus pi times 20. 20 is, uh, is 10. So it all probably has to. It will, yes, ma'am, it's option two if we do it that way. So which is 100. 131. Point four one five. Yes, so we need to do it this way one thirty one point four four two. Hence, this why this one will not work is because we take in this, but we were subtracting this area. We also need to subtract the 20 again. Let's see, because I'm adding it twice uh, in this. I didn't take it out. I didn't take out this 20 that I added. So it should be the same now. 120 minus. So you need to also take away the uh, additional 20. Minus, minus 20 times. No, it's not the right. And it's still not working. Minus 20. No. Mm -mm. Okay, so not that way. You will not do it that way because it's the circumference. We just add all the other areas. It only works when we do the the area is not going to work with the circumference. Okay. 
And we have six minutes. Let's see if we do have another question. Oh, we do. Calculate the volume of a container shown in the figure below. It is a rectangular box with a curved lid that is a cylinder slice down in the middle. Okay, so this is also a composite figure because we've got a box and the cylinder, half a cylinder as well. So we are asked to calculate the volume of this container. So we need to take into consideration two things because we'll have to add them. So we need to calculate the volume of uh, the rectangle or this rectangle piece, which will be the length times the breadth times the height, which is all the values you see. And you need the area, the volume of this rectangle, um, the cylinder piece, but it is half of it. It's not the full of it. So, but the volume of a cylinder is because it's a circle. It will be pi r squared times the height, and I'm going to divide that by two because it's split into two. It's half. Half of it is not a full cylinder. So let's substitute the value. So first we need to find the radius. The radius because this length from here to here is our diameter, which is eight. It's the same as that length. So it will be eight. So our radius will be four. So let's substitute the values. Ten times eight times six plus five times four squared times the height of this cylinder will be the tenth. It will be the same as the breadth of this. So it mm -hmm. will be ten. The height of this cylinder thing. This cylinder thing, this height, will be the same as that, which is 10. Divide everything by 2. The radius is the same as the length of this, because the radius is on the square thing, on this. Um, so it will be the same. And the height of the cylinder will be the same as the breadth of the sorry man the box. The height of this cylinder will be the same as the length from here, the 10. This long length will be similar to the height of oh because the cylinder, so we have to like turn it basically. Yes. Okay. Because it, you cannot say this is the height of a cylinder. It's not the height of the mm -hmm. cylinder. The cylinder is face down. It's if it was like that, you will say the height is this. But now your cylinder is like this. I get option two. Let's get all the values. Yes, option two. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> ten times eight times six is four hundred and eighty, and I times four squared times ten divided by two is two hundred and fifty one point three three two five one point five uh, three two or oh, three three <laughs> sorry three.
adding them together will give you seven hundred. Okay, so you can uh, also look for other questions. Let's see. In this other paper, I've shared them in the chat, right? You did get them. Let's see on this one if it's difficult. You no, know, it also. There are so many num numbers. I cannot make up some of the numbers that they they wrote here, but I think there is a 12. So this is also a composite because it's uh, a figure that has a rectangle and a semicircle at the top and also a triangle. Now the challenge with this is because they didn't tell you that this triangle is a right angle, but it doesn't matter because you need to be calculated <laughs> the perimeter. <laughs> the perimeter of the figure. So it means adding Hi, Lizzie. Are you there? I think okay. she lost connection. <laughs> okay. Is there um, last week's um, session? Can I get it somewhere? Um, I think, yeah, I think she's gone, guys. Yeah, the recordings are um, supposed to be on Mayonesa and our module. I think um, there is a section where they have all the recordings of the previous classes. So okay. I think maybe just check there. Um, we can actually check now while we're on the call. So it'd be... The Saturday recordings are not there. I already checked. Is it? And okay. additional resources. There's nothing. It's mainly the weekly sessions. It was on Thursdays. That is the... Mm. But the Saturday classes are not there. Um, what did you cover last Saturday? Which modules? Um, last Saturday, I'll tell you now. We did um let's check here. So we did like simplifying um yeah, we did like expressions and equations. Like simplifying and then like making X the subject, that kind of stuff we did last week, which was also really nice. Um, it was a really nice session as well. Yes. There's also a lady here, right? I don't know if she's on the call now, but it doesn't look like she's here. But she's also like a like an admin kind of thing, because I thought we could just maybe ask her about the the recordings. But otherwise, the other option is to um maybe email the lecturer um for this module and then ask them like where can we find these recordings yeah because so she said that. it is recorded so it may have to be somewhere look on teams no okay. um if, I, I checked there there's nothing there Hi guys, I'm also struggling to download the also especially for me i can't see anything that's of the first semester for you or the second semester for you guys as i was part of the first semester team mm. and they don't give me the notifications or when the classes is i had like a average 85 percent i just the day before we had our final exam i had a c-section so i didn't write exam on the day seeing that i was in hospital yes <sighs> sorry guys um, i i got cut off i don't know why hello lizzie 
Hello, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Yes. We would like to know the, set, the Saturday sessions. Where can we find it? Because I didn't attend last Saturday. Mm. All the sessions are on, on the UNISA platform. Uh, let me get the link. And somebody shared in the chat also now one of the classes, so you can get that one from the last week's uh, class. Yes. But, um, but, but Lizzie, I think Even maybe teams. like the link could be very helpful as well for those who are maybe not on here and maybe might ask us in the groups. Then we can just share it with them. Uh, yes, I will share that. Um, the way you can get all the sessions, um, not just the schedule. I don't, I don't want the schedule, only the schedule. I want all the, the sessions. Yeah, let me see. The recordings, I want the recordings, not the schedule. Sorry, just give me a second. I need to get the right link. Okay. So, all the sessions, including also the sessions that we used to have during the week, you can catch them up under the numeracy center. Um, on the so they are all recorded. So let, let me post it in there. Oh, someone someone just posted there the link to the recording, not the not the that's for last week's recording. Yeah. So in the chat there, um, um, thank you, Lizzie. I've shared the link to all the other recordings, including the recordings that we have been doing for the past the past months um, on Mondays. So you can go there. And let me just stop sharing that for a minute and share what I'm referring to so that when you get to that platform, you know what exactly you need to be looking out for. Why did I? Okay, so <clears throat> when you click on that link, It will take you to a thing that looks like this, depending whether you're clicking on it on the phone or on, on your laptop. So there are tutorial classes that have been happening. Some of the recordings have been recorded since last semester. So you can also look at other modules that you have that have classes. And there are also the writing center where they do the English and um, all that, and then we have the numeracy center where I am. Uh, so under the basic numeracy, that's all the sessions that we had on every Monday for the past three months or so, or four months. And then the exam preparation, you will find all the recordings for the exams, you will find them there. If you're doing QMI, you will find them under that. But that, those are the two places where you will find the recording. So if you click on the basic numeracy one, uh, it will take you to this. Uh, will, you will be able to see all of the recorded sessions that we had on a weekly basis. I don't know, it takes long to respond on a weekly, weekly basis until I think the 19th of September. That was the last recording. 
And if you want the notes relating to that, you can just click on open notes and it should take you to where the notes are in order for you to follow through what we have been doing in those sessions as well. So the notes are also uploaded. Are uploaded in here. We do have, we had sessions in the first semester, but there are no recordings for that. If you want the recordings for that, you can follow my YouTube channel. Um, but you will have to sift through a whole lot of videos to get to, um, but it's easy. You just search under my YouTube channel, you search for your right, uh, you can type the BNU, they will all, all the recordings for BNU will pop up and you can follow those. Um, yeah, so those are the, the things. Um, I was part of the, semester one group and it was really nice i i i'm actually just recapping yeah so because they didn't keep the semester one recordings but i do have have them uh let's see so maybe probably under the some people said they can't access the the chat you can find your um, the papers here. I will post the other two. I think I didn't include them. So I'll also include the other two on here. Then you will have some of the, the exam papers. Anywho, I need to get to go eat and get ready for my next session with the QMI students at 12 o'clock. So I will stop it right here and stop the recording and I will see you next week as we do our last um, session on financial uh, financial meds. So see you next week. Thank Bye. You, Lizzie. Thanks, thanks, Lizzie. Have an awesome weekend for everyone.